okay, it's hot in here. Oh, oh, this? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you'd notice. Yeah, I got a fake degree. <laughs> I don't have my actual degree yet, but yeah, no big deal. Just a master of music technology for whatever that's worth. <sighs> oh, but you know what? This doesn't make a very good fan. That's a lot better. All right, so let's go over some techniques for like voiceover, podcasting, that kind of thing. One thing you'll notice on pretty much every tutorial is they're gonna mention EQ and they're gonna mention compression and a lot of them, not all of them, I, I feel like all of them should, but some of them don't even mention DSing. The three main things that are probably going to be on most worthwhile tutorials are EQ, compression, and de-essing. But there's a bunch of other things you can do to voiceover and podcasting chains that could affect your sound in a really positive manner. And you know, it's gonna be a little bit different than just using your standard EQ and compression. But first, I do wanna give a shout out to James who uh, a couple weeks ago had sent me this request to make a voiceover chain for him. And he has been kind enough to let me share it for you guys today. So we have a sample of him talking I'm gonna show you it without the chain on, and then I'm gonna show it to you with the chain on. The US Federal Aviation Administration has given Virgin Galactic the green light to begin transporting commercial passengers to space aboard its VSS spacecraft. This is an expansion of the company's existing license, which had granted it permission to fly professional test pilots and astronauts to space using its space plane. Now note, there's gonna be a little bit of a loudness bias Basically, throughout this whole chain, we are boosting the signal a few dBs higher, and that's inherently going to sound perhaps a little bit better. But with that in mind, we do also have a couple different chains. We have the typical mastering chain for Ableton VoiceOver, which I'm actually not using in this, but if you wanted to adjust the compression ratio, adjust the tone on the fly, you can using this chain that comes with Ableton. And then I also made a small mastering chain that's occurring on the uh, master fader which is basically going through a small multiband compression. It's basically just gonna do a little bit of compression on the mids. And then we also have a gentle limiter doing some minor gain reduction about 3 dB or so. The light just fell. Now we're gonna go over levels both on the input and on the output of this chain. We're gonna do that at the end of the video though. Uh, but first, I wanted to talk about EQ. Also, I just mentioned multiband compression, which is something we haven't covered on the channel before. We're also gonna cover a little bit of that during the compression part of this. If you've been on the channel before, you know that I have kind of two ways that I do EQ. I have the first chain of EQ, which is basically going to be all clinical. I take what I hear in uh, the voice that I'm given, and I try and cut down on things that are either too resonant or not needed in the vocal itself. For example, here I have a low cut happening at around 90 hertz, and I have a bunch of dips in the low mid frequencies that I thought were just a little bit too resonant in his voice, which made it sound a little bit muddy. There's also a pretty aggressive cut on the like 7K range. That's where the S sounds are on James's voice. So we're taking that and we're also cutting that down right from the beginning. So why don't we shut everything else on the chain off so we can hear what the first part of this vocal chain is doing with only that one thing activated. To space aboard its VSS spacecraft. This is an expansion of the company's existing license, which had granted it permission to fly professional test pilot now, with this EQ alone, all we've done is basically take, you know, something that is relatively nice about his voice, and we've just cut a lot of that character out. We're going to add more of it back in later, but for now, all we've done is taken out resonant frequencies that we find, you know, maybe a little bit too muddy, and we've taken it out, which might make his vocal appear thin for now. Now, what happens after this chain is basically um, what some might call scooping the mids. I basically have a small boost in the low mid frequencies. These are the frequencies that you'd currently see boosted on something like an SM7B. Um, but yeah, we have that low mid frequency boosted, giving it a little bit more of a radio friendly presence. And then we've also boosted the high end to give it a little bit of a crispness. The US Federal Aviation Administration has given Virgin Galactic the green light to begin transporting. It has a lot more presence to it now because we've boosted the low end so it's solidifying the vocal but also we've boosted the high end which is giving it that air 
which is inherently going to be pleasing to the ear. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has given Virgin Galactic the green light to begin transporting commercial passengers. So much more solidified vocal just with those two EQs. Now next, we're gonna go into, we're gonna touch on something called dynamic EQ, which I've talked about in a previous video. Um, I'll link it above. But we're gonna do the dynamic EQ a little bit later because the dynamic EQ itself is later in the chain. This is the only not native plugin in the chain. Everything else is stock from Ableton, but the TDR Nova is free. If you're interested, it's among my favorite plugins. All right, so the next thing we have is basically this, um, the glue compressor by Ableton. These are sort of analog emulations. <laughs> they're, they're a little bit of a poor analog emulation, but they still do the job. I find that uh, compressors with Ableton typically are a little bit weak. You might need to double them up if you want the desired sound. But when it comes to voiceover, we don't want to overly compress. Whenever we're using a compression in a song setting, we not only use it to bring out the cool things about whatever we're mixing, you know, to bring out the cool aspects of a vocal or whatever, but we also use them to sit above or below something in a mix. When it comes to voiceover, that's not really an issue. So therefore, you shouldn't worry about making something too overly compressed because it's not competing with anything. You're basically just going to be controlling the peaks. So in this, you'll see that the gain reduction that's happening is pretty minimal. It's about three or four at most. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has given Virgin Galactic the green light to begin transporting commercial passengers to space aboard its VSS spacecraft. This is an expansion of the company's existing license. And then once it's been normalized, we did boost it like one or two dB using the makeup gain. You know, you can add these dBs in different places. This is just where I happen to add it using this uh, glue compressor. Now, we're also doing some de-essing using compression. And if you know anything about de-essing, you know that a, a de-esser is basically just a compressor that works in a very specific frequency, otherwise known as multiband compression. It's basically just choosing the high end of a compressor and only compressing that range. So that's what we're doing here. When we turn it on, we have two of them activated. This is the low frequencies. You can see you don't see any graphic there. We've turned it off. This is the mid frequencies. This is the high frequencies. Each one of these frequencies are gonna have their own compression ratio, their own power, their own compressor, essentially. Given Virgin Galactic the green light to begin transporting commercial passengers to space aboard its VSS spacecraft. This is an expansion of the company's existing license. So you can see how this spike is activating whenever we're hearing that S sound more than anything. It's reducing those S sounds and it's making it just a little bit less harsh on the ears while also doing some mild compression on the mid frequencies. So from there we do something that you're not gonna necessarily see in every um, podcasting voiceover chain we're adding some mild distortion. That seems dumb, right? We don't necessarily want to distort the vocal. It should sound as natural as possible. Well, we're definitely not gonna do a lot of distortion. We don't wanna make this crazy. We're basically using it to saturate and stylize a specific region of the voice. This should be extremely subtle. In fact, you might not hear any difference unless you're using headphones that have a open frequency range from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And then also uh, like studio monitors, things that could very clearly hear all of the frequency spectrum. Otherwise, this is lost on, you know, your Apple AirPods. The green light to begin transporting commercial passengers to space aboard its VSS spacecraft. This is an expansion of the company's existing license, which had granted it permission to fly professional. Yeah, so this is basically just doing a small amount of emulation to mimic going through uh, like a tube uh, overdrive. And then we're doing a very minimal amount of drive and we're basically adding a little bit of tone to the high end. The one that comes after it is a little bit more apparent. This is gonna warm up the highs as the preset says. It's not exactly like the preset I did some adjustments. Boarding commercial passengers to space aboard its VSS spacecraft. Definitely we have a dB boost whenever we're doing this saturator, but you can see how the high end just got more apparent. The US Federal Aviation Administration has given Virgin Galactic the green light to begin transporting commercial passengers to space aboard its VSS spacecraft. Now you'll find whenever you use these distortions, even if you're using it in a really subtle manner you might begin um me 
you might begin saturating frequencies that you didn't necessarily want to target. And that's where we have something like a dynamic EQ at the end of a chain. So this TDR Nova here, it's an EQ, but you'll find I, I put EQs in the front and I put dynamic EQs as sort of like cleanup control at the end of a chain. Um, now, again, this is the only third party plugin. But you'll see whenever I open it up, uh, we had a little bit of saturation in like the 600, 700-ish range. Uh, and I didn't necessarily want that frequency as strong because I thought it sounded a little bit boxy. Uh, and then we have that same 7K range for DSing. I added, essentially, I'm using a multiband compressor in order to compress uh, the S sounds. But I'm also using the TDR Nova to pull down the S sounds whenever they get just a little bit harsh in that range. Let's hear what that sounds like. This is an expansion of the company's existing license, See which that? had granted it permission to fly professional test pilots and astronauts to space using its space plane. You can see that space plane. You can see that whenever we're doing voiceover, there's a lot more activity on the TDR Nova in the mid range because I'm pulling that down a lot harder and it's doing just some subtle DSing to help out the multi-brand compressor that's happening earlier in the chain. And the last thing is just a gate. This is really useful if you're working in a space that has um, a noisy noise floor, meaning you're gonna get a lot of outside background information. Yeah, it's just really great for, uh, you know, rejecting any noise that you did not want to hear because when you're not speaking, it's not letting any noise through. And the way you control how natural this sounds is through the release. It's an astronauts to space using its space plane. You know what? It's not as noticeable because you're hearing the noise floor from my computer fan through my own microphone. So I'm going to mute my microphone so it's more noticeable. Space using its space plane. Space using its space plane. Anyways, yeah, I hope that was helpful. You basically just have to take the release and that's going to control how naturally it decays. Make sure you set your threshold and the return so you're not going to cut off any of the pauses in between words. You only want to cut off pauses in between the phrase. And that might sound weird to, to work with return and to work with threshold, but I promise you, whenever you're working in your specific podcast or voiceover for mixing, it's going to come naturally. You're just going to find out where it sits um, in the most organic way possible. There's not really a, a rhyme or reason. It's all going to depend on your specific vocal clip. But again, just tweak it until it sounds nice. I promise you it's not too difficult. This last thing is just to um, essentially observe what frequencies are being most represented. It's just a spectrum analyzer. Professional test pilots and astronauts to space using its space plane. All right, so that is the whole chain itself. And like I said, there's another mastering chain that is not really engaged at all. Uh, that comes with Ableton whenever you do the podcast template. Um, and after that, we have a mastering chain. You can see here, it's going to do a little bit of compression in the lows, mids, and a little bit of highs using this standard multi-brand compression, doing a gentle amount of limiting, which is still like two or three dB, really minor. Now, here's the big thing. I talked about how we're going to go over levels at the end of this video. It's pretty easy. Just stick to these numbers. Um, and as long as you're not either boosting so crazy loud that you're bringing up the noise floor of your room, um, it, it shouldn't be an issue. You're going to want to record at negative 18 to negative 12 dB. That's the optimum recording levels for almost anything, especially when it comes to vocals. That being said, if you're cranking your preamp and it's maxing out at 100% of its power and you notice you're getting a lot of fuzz because of that, like, like this, hear all that fuzz. And it's also really sensitive. Um, my girlfriend's in the room right now, and if she could just talk, Hello. that's going to be way more noticeable. Yeah, so the room rejection is going to be way more if you crank the preamp. So if you're struggling to get to negative 18 to negative 12 dB uh, with all of your preamp volume in, just record quieter. If you're not doing a streaming setup, it's not live, you can just boost the clip using the makeup gain in post. No big deal. And now, whenever we're doing output volume, you basically want to set a ceiling around negative 1 dB. That means you might be able to boost it, in my case, 5 dB um, with this specific volume. Set a ceiling to around negative 1 dB and boost the gain until you're reaching around there, as long as it's not an extreme amount. If you need more gain in order to get to that point, I would encourage you to add more gain earlier in the chain, maybe through makeup gain on a compressor, maybe through the clip gain in the beginning, maybe through the output gain of an EQ. We don't want to rely on just one plugin 
to boost the entire signal. Honestly, this vocal chain is a pretty complex example on how you can achieve that sort of podcast voiceover sound, but I don't want you to think that it, it, you know it's just compression, de-essing, and EQ. It could very well be, but you can do a lot of other stuff to make your voice stand out um, just through messing with different plugins. And that is all, thank you so much. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. If you'd like to work on a project, like a mixing project, or if you'd like to take lessons, you can email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. And with that, I will see you in the next video, everyone. Bye.